I'm Robert Scoble, and we're, uh, I'm a mobile guy. I love mobile apps and mobile things, and so th this company, uh, TipSense, caught my eye with its new app crawler engine, helps me find the apps, and that's a crowded space, so we're gonna talk about that. But TipSense built a, a data studying system, which is pretty interesting, to study unstructured data, and we're gonna find out more about that as well. So, interesting conversation coming up, all about TipSense. <laughs> So who are you? Hi, I'm uh, David Shore. I'm the founder of TipSense. And uh, we've uh, been working for four years building a technology that can take unstructured content um, in the web and actually start making some sense out of it, you know, extracting the semantics from it. So, so when you say unstructured uh, content, uh, geeks know what that means, but normal people don't. And like my dad watching this is like, what? <laughs> you lost him already. Yeah. So w explain what you mean by unstructured content. So we can kind of give you a little background of, kind of where we came. So. Um, we started with the first uh, website called Dish Tip, which was kind of what to eat and where. And it kind of started where I was at a restaurant in Seattle and I was deciding between uh, the Eggs Benedict and this frittata. And, and I asked the server, you know, what's the better dish? And he said, um, you know, hands down, you know, the Eggs Benedict is the best dish on the menu. People come from all over. And I thought, I was like, that's really important information, but from looking at the menu, you'd never figure that out. Or looking at you know, reviews on consumer sites, that information is buried. And kind of you know, four years ago, we started to say, how can we solve this algorithmically? And we, by kind of surfacing the knowledge, we basically said, if we looked at all the footprint of you know, reviews across the web, whether it's from you know, review sites, whether it's from Twitter, et cetera, how can we figure out what that signal is? And that's where we launched Dish Tip, which is basically finding the best dishes at restaurants. And so kind of to take that example, when I go to a new city like DC, I can land, bring it up, it'll tell me all the best dishes to go kind of what the locals have taken years to figure out. So I know like food spotting uh, solved that problem by having people take pictures of the food and then rating them. And so that sort of uh, surfaces the uh, popular dish. How did you find that uh, weird, you know, signal deep inside somebody's uh, review and pull that up? And that's, that's kind of our secret sauce that we've been building for the last four years. But you're right, so food spotting took you know, a crowdsourcing approach. Um, when we're taking a pure algorithmic kind of AI approach. And we think that um, by taking this approach, it's much more robust. You know, you're not susceptible to some skew. You don't have all the sparsity problems, you know, when food spotting doesn't have the critical mass. And, you know, the, and the best thing is that this technology is not domain specific. This is a content agnostic. So we've taken that same technology from DishTip and now applied it to the app discovery space. So how, how does it, how does it uh, summarize and pull up? How does it find the signal deep inside a, somebody's review? Yeah, so we have a couple core technologies that we developed. So one is uh, what we call conceptual entity recognition. So if you look at you know, an article or you know, a review or what have you, it actually can figure out you know, the most statistically important concepts. You know, kind of like Amazon's statistically unlikely phrases when you look at a, a product review. So we do the same thing where we you know, apply a lot of uh, big data analysis and statistics across all of the, the content we find across the web to really surface the most interesting pieces. So for example, if you're looking at an app, you know, if you look at the publisher's description, it might look great, but then when you actually use it, you realize hey, I have to have a Facebook login to use it, or you know, the in-app um, ads are very annoying. And by looking at kind of the consensus of reviews and opinions across the web, we can actually surface those up. So when you're uh, about to decide on an app, we can make, help you make a better decision. So you're crawling the web and not just looking at the review, you're looking at other signals, other places for what actually is important in that review. Right, and kind of that's how we build our training model. So we can have to look at a whole bunch of orthogonal, you know, tangentially related domains. Like in the same way for a dish tip, we had to look at you know, recipes and cooking sites to figure out what's related to food. We've done a similar thing for apps. So there's another company out there, uh, Quixi, that says they do similar thing. How do you differentiate from that or other competitors who are trying to do the same thing? And I think we're a uh, you know, app crawler, so it's A P P C R A W L R no E. Um, I think where we shine is you know, beyond just the search; it's the discovery part. So we have kind of a semantic-based search, so you can search for you know I'm a first-time mom, or I want to stay organized, or I want to lose weight. But then once you've you know, found got your search results, we have a bunch of you know, contextual cues to help you further refine it. So if you were looking for, say, a productivity app, you know, that's still, here's the number one app for productivity, that doesn't really mean something because you could be talking about like a mind mapping app or maybe you want to do a task list app you know, or, or to do a time management or, or on and on and on. 
So what the algorithm from TipSense does is it surfaces kind of all those different facets or ways you could help um, further down to disambiguate and really find. Can we see an there. example of sure. that? Okay, so here's a app crawler, and let's say you're again looking for. Ah. <laughs> okay, so it's productivity, but again, we have this is this contextualized discovery where you say, do I want a task manager? Do you want note taking, time management? And what we found from our users is that in many times you don't know the exact word you're looking for. You kind of have an idea. So here you might say, you know, passing time in a doctor's office or something just to kind of get it started, and then it'll help you know, surface all these other areas that you may never have um, previously thought of. So yeah. when I had productivity, I actually meant task manager, and you know, there's just some task managing capabilities of Evernote and Wonderlist. Now, what if I wanted to compare SpringPad to Evernote or uh, different apps? Right. Can so I see can, a yeah? So we can. And this is um, you know, something that you really can't do anywhere else, is because we have such a deep contextualized understanding of all the concepts involved, we can actually you know, compare Evernote to Wonderlist you know, to remember the milk, and kind of how they, each of them performs on these different categories. And maybe you say, no, I really just wanted a shopping list. You can click here on shopping list, and now here are the best shopping list apps. So it's kind of this, this, this give and take, this guided discovery where as you go through the process, you can find all these apps you may have not have even thought of before. That's awesome. So is this free? Is this a free service to use? Yeah, it's a free service. Um, and so how do you get paid? Is it through affiliate selling of apps or? Yeah, um, yeah we haven't, we've really been focusing on the core technology. Um, we launched this just two months ago and we've already gone to a million users. Um, no marketing, no advertising, just word of mouth, but people are finding it's just different, different than you could do on the app iTunes and it saves them time. Um, you know, we have a lot of opportunities now that we're looking at, um, even from different advertising models. So. And one of the, the things that we have because of we have a concept model instead of keywords is you know ad targeting for example mm -hmm. you know we can even kind of build an ad sense where if you look at just any website or mobile website we can actually make recommendations of what are apps that are related and if you just try to do it by keywords you really can't quite do it um, yep. even for uh, the bidding type of things we can actually say you know, I want to bid on um, you know, productivity or saving time or losing weight and these are all these concepts that you know if you otherwise were just in the app store it would just be a lot of noise. There's not really any structure to it. So we kind of provide a structure and framework um, to really kind of bring the app community together. No, that's cool. What, what other things can this uh, technology do? Or the, the, first of all, let's stay focused on app crawler and then t talk about your platform. Uh, any other things on that app crawler that it would help me find a better yeah. app? Yeah, sure. So um, there's a couple other features then that I uh, really can't find elsewhere. But so if we're looking at this app, for example, um, there's 18,000 reviews. and. As we were saying before, you know, there's a lot of information that might get lost in the noise, and you don't have to read all 18,000 reviews. So we kind of have summarization technology, kind of basically pulling out of those reviews what are the concepts that keep occurring and occurring again. There might be different variations, but we can kind of group them together. Um, we have different um, feature rankings, kind of what you would see in TripAdvisor, like the number one for this. So basically, it helps um, increase conversions. So you s um, typically, if you see an app, you know, it's kind of how do you know when I should pull the trigger? So you say, oh, I really want a family calendar. That's the app I really wanted. This is number one for that category, and then I can help make that decision. So it's it's a whole bunch of different features to help you kind of navigate and really discover um, the apps. It, one thing, I, a week ago I moved from iOS to Android. Is there a way to put in a, an iOS app name and find the Android equivalent? And a lot of people are doing that with Windows Phone and BlackBerry and stuff like that. Um, yeah, you can, if the name is the same, you can. If well, if the, if the name is the same, yes, but like uh, there's some apps that are on iOS that aren't on Android, and then you have to find a qu equivalent thereof. Right, so that's, that's actually a good example. So when you look at the, kind of this functional model of you know, family calendar meal planning, now you actually have kind of the keyword and the concept that's relevant. So we actually mine all I iOS and Android apps, so you would just you know, search for, let's say, meal planning, you just type meal planning Android, and then it would figure out the best apps for in that. Very cool. Um, very cool. Yeah. So the platform underneath, so your real business is this platform underneath, and you're able to use this for a variety of different things, right? Right. Are you going to sell that platform underneath as something separate from just trying to get ad revenue on the, on the top, on the app crawler? Yeah, so we're kind of an exciting time. I think we've had a lot of validation of the technology, and now we're kind of looking at different options. Um, for that and that licensing is certainly something that we can consider. Okay. Um, yeah. how, how is your company structured? How are you funded and yeah. how many employees? So we're uh, self-funded. Um, had a previous uh, success with an acquisition. 
um, you know, a handful of people right now and looking to grow. I think there's a lot of interest in this space. Um, in particular, as we talk about you know, mining you know, the, the, the semantic web, right? and you've seen different approaches to that. You've seen you know, kind of you know, all the tags and RDF. Um, you know, much of the big data I talk right now is in the structured data, right? So you look yep. at you know telephone calls or what tape, what TV shows you watch on your set top box, and our kind of sweet spot is is we we've, we've mined the semantics from the unstructured web, and that's where the majority of, of content is coming. That's where all the new content is being created. There's a much lower barrier of entry, and I think this finding meaning from this unstructured content can really um, dramatically improve the quality of, of of the web going forward. So we can talk about the Internet of Things, for example. Right. Finding an app on app crawler, you know, we have a million apps to navigate. That's pretty challenging, and we think you know this guided discovery and this approach can help you um, better discover your app. But imagine you know a billion things. You know, I want to lose weight. What are all the different you know, connected apps you know across the web that kind of are all aligned to that intention? And if you don't have a standard, you know it's it's hard. And if you're trying to wait for standards bodies to do it, it's not quite there. We point you know tip sense at a domain, say apps or food or health. And it kind of builds the metadata around that entire domain semantically with with statistical techniques. Wow! And we think, you know, in a way, we can see us building out building fingerprints you know, across the web for every domain, and then you know, we can be able to shift the needle on advertising from keywords to concepts. And that's where, right? If you're a producer of something for losing weight, you don't want to say losing weight and go through all these different keywords. It really ties to a concept. And I think by kind of making that shift, it's going to really um, so your your system that is, is crawling the web for like like losing weight might be quantified self, might be uh, you know fitness apps or there's a variety of terms that people are calling these things all over the web. How how much do I need to know to set up your system ahead of time, and how much do I just say you know start with Nike Fuel Van and go and find and see right. what else you can find Actually, on, we could show you a, on competition for Nike Fuel Van and then words for Nike Fuel Van. Right. Right. Um, so here's an example of kind of the, a screenshot of the fingerprinting technology. So in an apps domain, right, we type in first time moms. Here it's making a list of recommendations related to first time moms. So it's contraction timers, it's baby tracker, it's baby's names, it's ambient noise, it's first aid, food tracker. This wasn't trained. These are the statistical correlations that TipSense found in the data. But you had to start it with something. We point it at the domain and give it some rules, and then it starts. To so, so how much rule? How how many rules did you have to write? To so we built App Crawler in less than two months. Okay. And if you look at how long it would typically take without that semantic platform, it could be easily into the years. Wow. Um, so very little training, and as you go. To each successive domain, there's so much overlap that you know, the incremental cost for different domain is, is negligible. Wow, that's pretty cool. And in this age of context, this th this system is going to be really more and more important because as I wear Google Glass, I'm going to want to know all sorts of things about the world I'm in. And systems like yours are going to study everything. <laughs> yeah, right, that's I mean, true. I mean, think about right. The, the, it's all about context and the disambiguation and, and understanding your intent. So. By having, instead of just working on keywords or these, you know, just ratios, we have something very accessible, right? It's concepts, they're readable, they're, they're things that can make sense. And then when you look at, right, Google Glass, for example, it's, it's what is your context? How do you build a profile? What web pages have you looked at? How do we build up, you know, a context of what you're interested in? So if you're walking down the street and the losing weight is, you know, when you're looking at the fingerprints, that's something that's been primed. Now we can make recommendations along that context. And, and typically, it's, it's a hard problem because everything gets too noisy. Um, this tip sense is really able to surface the signal to a very high actionable level, where I think some of the disambiguation problems that have been limiting before are not an issue anymore. So you, to end up, you, it's a little difficult aiming people at you, because one group of people I want to aim at you is people who love apps and want to find apps. And that's just a, a search engine or a discovery engine, right? They don't care how it works. They just want to find an app to you know, help them lose weight or whatever. And the other group of people that I want to aim at are developers who might want to use your technology to build new kinds of experiences for people, right? right. Is that right? Absolutely. There's two kind of stories here. And, yeah. and I think the, the takeaway is that if there's all this talk about big data and you know, big data is going to change the world. And so far, we haven't seen that many examples from that directly benefit a consumer. They might benefit a marketing agency. You know, we've taken big data. And by making it surface the actionable information, make it uh, beneficial to a user. So a user you know, going to a new city, 
can immediately figure out the best dishes. Now, when you want to find you know, the best app for productivity, oh, I really meant you know, list taking for productivity. Now you can do it. I mean, it's, it's, we've been hearing people say, it's, it saves me a half hour per app that I download. I don't have to go through hundreds of pages of the app store. Yeah. So it's definitely benefiting consumers. And then right from the developer and you know, the rest of the community, you know, this technology you know, really can help uh, be part of the next generation of big data applications. Sounds awesome. Thank you so much. Where do we start? Where do we learn more about you? Um, you go to uh, App Crawler and go to the About Us page and shoot us an email. Very cool. Thank you so much. Thanks for your time.